Do you have a walker with a seat? Or maybe you call it a four-wheeler or a rollator. If you do use one of these, you know the benefits that come with using one of these. It has a seat, which is a huge plus because if you get tired, you can sit down safely. And it has a basket in the bottom you can put stuff in. But did you know there are hidden dangers associated with using one of these? And if you don't use these the right way, you could end up falling and breaking your hip or worse. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the walker and some hidden dangers at the end of the video that you must know in order to stay safe when you're using one of these. I'm Dr. Sean, your PT guy, and our videos help you learn how to move better and stay independent so you can enjoy your life. Let's get started. Disclaimer. So when do you actually wanna use one of these walkers? When is it appropriate for you? A standard walker is nice because it's more stable in general, but it doesn't have a seat. So you're kind of limited to your endurance of how far you can go. Like for instance, if you try to walk outside with one of those walkers, you're not gonna be able to sit down if you get tired. Whereas one of these, you can sit down if you do it appropriately. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. A three wheel walker, on the other hand, is nice for moving into corridors that are very narrow. However, they can tip over on you and you have to be extra careful with one of those. Those are the least stable ones out of all the walkers. So the walker with the seat has three major advantages over the other walkers. One, it has four wheels. Those four wheels can glide over the uneven concrete or over rugs a little bit easier than the other walkers, especially the standard walker with the skis on the back. The second is the seat. The seat is critical. The seat is the best part about this walker because if you have weaker legs and you're just trying to build up strength in your legs and you're trying to go further distances, you can actually lock the walker, turn around and sit down safely, which I'm about to show you in a moment, um, and then you can rest your legs and then get up and keep going further. And then if you need to take a break, you can sit down and the same thing, you just rinse and repeat. You can go a lot further on this walker than you can in the three-wheeler or the standard walker. So this is an amazing machine. The third cool part about this walker is the storage compartment. This one, like most of them, have a little basket underneath and you can put different things in there, whether it's your purse or you can put in books down in there that you're reading, like this one. Oh, look at that or you can even put in your oxygen tank. If it's small enough, you can put it over there and tuck it in there and the cord comes out and it can be on your nose and you can go on your way. So the wheels, the seat, and the storage make this walker an excellent walker to use if you know how to use it safely. Now, how are you supposed to stand up in this walker? Well, first of all, whenever you're measuring the walker, you want to stand as tall as you can, all right? You just try to stand up as tall as you can. I know not everyone's going to be able to stand up as tall because of spinal stenosis, arthritis, a whole lot of litany of, of ailments and issues. But if you are able to stand up, just try to stand up as tall as you can, drop your hand down at the side, and if that handle goes to your wrist, that's about right where you want to put it, okay? This is the little knobby here that you undo, and then you can just move this up and down and then you can tighten it. Once you got it at the right height, mine's at the right height, so we're good there. Um, and then you just stand looking ahead and you start trying to walk. So once you've got the walker at the right height by your wrist, you hold on to your walker, you try to keep it close to you when you're walking. If you let it get too far out in front of you like this, then what happens, and if you've seen this, you know what's gonna happen. You're gonna let it get too far out in front of you and you can't really pick up your feet. And then you're gonna go down and your nose is gonna get smushed and it's gonna be pointing the wrong direction. We don't want that. Keep your nose in the right direction. Okay, so keep the walker close by when you're walking and it's gonna look more like this. When you have your hands down at your side, just kind of keep it, keep your elbows at your side and just grab on there and look ahead and you're going like this, okay? Smooth walking, just don't let it get too far in front of you, okay? That's the first part about walking. Now, let's say we wanna sit down. 
Let's say you're walking to Walmart or you're walking somewhere or even just around the house and there's not really a place to sit down. There's no chair or maybe the chair is just outside of your reach and you're like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it over there. And if I try, I may end up tripping and falling or getting tired and weak and then my legs may give out and I may go down. Thankfully, you have a seat. So here's where most people go wrong though when they try to do this. When someone's using one of these walkers, they inevitably will lock it, not by, well, first thing is they'll think this locks it. That's not how it locks, squeezing this brake like this. It actually locks by pressing down, okay? You press it down and you'll hear a click, click, okay? And then once it's locked, then they try to sit down like this. They turn around and they sit like this, okay? Ah, and they get to relax. This is nice, all right? Especially if you're waiting in a long line. Sometimes I've looked over at someone in one of these walkers and they were sitting on one and I was waiting in the line. I'm like, man, I wish I had one of those right now, but I didn't. So you do though, so that's nice. So if, you, if someone were to get up from here, here's the issue. When someone tries to stand up from this position, even if they have pretty decent technique, the walker itself can slide on you, okay? I weigh 175 pounds on a good day, okay? Now, 175 pounds versus a machine, a walker that's like maybe 10 pounds, 175 pounds is gonna win. Who's gonna win, a semi-truck or a motorcycle? The semi-truck. I'm the semi-truck, yes, I'm a semi-truck. And this is more like a motorcycle, so if, a semi truck smashes into a motorcycle, that thing is just gonna be demolished. Same thing with me. If I try to move my body 175 pounds against this machine that's 10 pounds, it's gonna move on you, okay? So if I try to get up and I'm pushing my legs back like this, it's, it's sliding back, okay? That's not good. Number one, your wheels may not even be tight like my wheel's a little loose down there as well, but the key is even if your wheel is perfectly tight, it's still gonna slide on you, okay? So what should you do? One, you should remember the nose over your toes. You try to bring your feet back like that. You get to the edge of the seat a little bit more. You put your hands down there. You bring your nose over your toes, and then you use some momentum to try to get up, but you're just gonna have to lean super far forward and push yourself up. Okay, that's the safe way to do it. But again, if you're just getting up and it's pretty good, it's gonna slide back on you. Okay, the, the machine will slide out from under you and I cannot tell you how many people have come to see me in the hospital or I've gone to see them in home health or when I was in the rehab setting when people ended up in rehab because they were using one of these and they parked it in the middle of nowhere and it was locked, the wheels weren't moving at all, but they tried to get up and it slid out from under them, they fell and broke their hip. Now they've got hospitalization, they've got a poor quality of life, they may end up in rehab, short-term stay, not good, okay? So what should you do instead, okay? Here's what you do. When you're walking and you feel like you just gotta take a break, you gotta find something that is immovable, a, a surface or an object that you can park the walker up against that's not gonna move when you try to stand up, like a wall or the end of a couch or a car, um, one of those parking curb things, or even a car bumper or a wall itself, where, wherever you are, a countertop. Just when you're walking and you're getting tired, try to park it up against a wall like this and it's got the rubberized bumper there, so you're okay there, and then you lock it, you push down, okay, and then you turn yourself around, and then you sit, okay? So every time you try to get up now, that wall's not moving, the walker's not moving, and you're safe. That's the whole point. We gotta stay safe so you can stay independent and enjoy your life. So here's another thing that people get wrong, all right? So Sometimes they do this part perfectly great and it looks great, but when they get up and they unlock the walker, they think they should bring it around 
with them and then it ends up swirling and they end up swirling and falling down like this. They stand up and then they unlock it right here first. Oh, that's not a good sound. If you're a physical therapist, you hear that, you're like, please don't do that, okay? Not yet anyways, okay? So they unlock it and then either they start moving themselves and it starts moving, that's not safe, or worse, they stand still and they try to bring this around like this and they end up almost tripping and falling and they do fall, not, not wise. So what do you do? What's the safe way? So from here, you stand up, okay? And then you keep it locked. Your hands are still holding on. You turn your body around so you're facing the walker like this, okay? Back up a little bit, it's still locked. Now you unlock it, click, click. And now you come on like this and you're off and you're going. That's the way to use one of these safely, okay? Now, let's talk a little bit about the seat. The little bit about the seat. This seat is amazing. What I like about the seat is it can, you can hold your purse, you can hold oxygen in here, you can put a ton of things in here, and you can even put a nice plate of food, especially my wife's food. You can put a plate of my wife's food on top and it's delicious, yum, and then you can bring that with you and you don't have to try to hold on to the plate and bring you know, the plate over and all these other things in your silverware. You can plop it right on the seat and bring it over to your dinner table. Delicious, especially with my wife. So, amazing. Now, last little thing. Let's say you wanna go further distance. That's why you use the seat. The seat is going to help build up your strength in your legs, which is the advantage of using this walker. You can go 100 feet, take a break if you get tired, or just before you get tired, sit down, take a break. Another 100 feet, take a break. Another 100 feet, take a break. You're not limited to where there's a seat. You can go walk in the mall, in the air-conditioned mall. You can go further distances and build up that strength again using one of these walkers. But you got to know how to do it safely when you're sitting down, like I said. What do you do if there is no wall around? What if you're in the middle of a parking lot and there are no park, there's no cars and there's no parking curbs? Or what do you do? Or maybe you're on the sidewalk and you're walking in your neighborhood. What do you do? Well, the front wheels, if you park that, sometimes, you gotta be tricky. This is a little tricky, okay? Sometimes, in some instances, you can lock it up, a, lock it with the front two wheels kind of in the grass a little bit. If it's in the grass, it's less likely to be moving, okay? Um, so that's helpful. It can be helpful, but it's, it's, it's not optimum, okay? It's really, you gotta be careful with that. If someone's walking with you too, they can just put their foot at the back when it's locked and they can just kind of keep their foot here or they could just stand right here while you're trying to get up from there, okay? So that's another way to do it. But the key is just these machines, these walkers are amazing. You just got to use it in a safe way. So that's how you do it. So now you know how to use one of these walkers appropriately and safely. These are great walkers if it's the right fit for your specific situation. They help improve your balance. They help improve the endurance. They can improve your leg strength by giving you more endurance because of the seat. And you can store things in there like oxygen or other things like your purse or even books like this. Don't fall. That's my book. That's cool. So, speaking of not falling, if you want a free home fall prevention guide, you can click the link down in the description below. And if you want more videos like this one to help you learn how to move better and stay independent so you can enjoy your life, click the subscribe button down below and we'll see you in the next video.